Well, hello and welcome back to another video on how to use Teams at Coal Valley Christian Schools. I'm Todd McQueen and I'm the IT director. And I just want to start off with saying a quick thank you to all of you who are, are working through this. I know it's just something else on top of everything you're, else you've been doing and it's it's all new. Um, just please bear with us. We're, we're in a little bit of a learning curve here too. Our teachers certainly are. And, and uh, amazingly enough, most of the kids have this down already. Um, from third grade up, they're okay. Uh, fifth grade up, they are using it weekly, so they can they can get around themselves pretty well. But for for the parents and the littler kids, it's it's pretty new. So thank you for your help with this. All right, I'm going to go into um, uh, a little demonstration on on what the Teams console is and a couple of different thing ways to look at it. So if you'll remember in the last video. Uh, we created some different profiles for uh, uh, multiple students sharing a computer. And this profile is for my fake student. Notice um, I'm not signed into Google. You don't have to. You can create the profile separately from creating a Google account. You don't need to do that. Um, you just create a profile by going down here and clicking add, and then you can add a student. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm using Caleb here. Now we've signed into this uh, browser before, and once you sign in one time, it'll it'll recognize the user until you clear the uh, the cache. But you, know, you don't need to do that. So you go to office.com and click sign in. <clears throat> See, it's already got his username in there. And uh, just a quick reminder on the usernames: how we we go first name dot last name. Uh, if there's any spaces or hyphens in the in the either the first name or the last name, we just drop those out and concatenate the name. And if we have students with the same name in the school, we will start to add an initial after their first name. So all subsequent students with the same name would have their middle initials. And then it always ends with our domain, cvcsonline.org. Let me log in as Caleb. And I am going to say yes. This doesn't save your password. It just uh, makes transitions easier inside of the office.com site. So this is the, the landing page when you get into office.com. You've got different applications along here that you can use. We've talked about this. You can also install Office on your home computers uh, and mobile devices. You can install it on up to five computers and five mobile devices. You have a free license that comes uh, through your student's account. And so for each student you have, you have five additional licenses. So that, that can add up pretty quickly. Uh, so feel free to install it. I will caution you, when you install Teams as the desktop version, kind of like you would install Word or Excel as a desktop version, um, one of the problems that you would run into is you'll have to log into that account or to that into the console, the desktop app. And that would mean you would have to log in as each student and then log out as each student. Um, the video we just did shows a, a little bit of a better way to do that. Um, hopefully it's more helpful. All right, so I, as Caleb, I'm going to select the Teams icon. All right, so this is uh, asking about notifications. I'm going to say dismiss to it, and then we'll come back. So this is the Teams console, and this is the web browser version of Teams. Remember, I, op I opened it up in Google Chrome. Um, there's two versions, desktop and web. I'm recommending the web for now. And this is what the students will see. Over here, we call this the left rail, and that's where the, you get into different portions of your team. So think of Teams more like a hub that takes you to other places rather than a destination. Uh, Teams is the starting point. And so in this main screen, this is where your student's going to see all their classes. There's two views to this screen, and it can be changed by clicking the gear icon. So if I come up here, click switch view. So this is the grid view. And if you had multiple classes, you would see multiple classes in here. Um, and, and this is just one. This is called a card. Uh, and I'll, I'll interchange the terms teams and classes. So they're pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to switch to the list view. This is the older view of, of what it looked like uh, originally, where all your teams are listed on the left side. 
and uh, you, you can jump from team to team pretty easily. I'm going to switch back to the grid view. I prefer that method myself. So here we are. Um, before we get into the class, I'm going to take a look at some options. So we have the assignments uh, tab. And this is where all the students assignments for all of their classes would appear and only that student only for that student's classes. There's not a way for you to log in and into teams in one place and see all your students information, all your students assignments and classes, etc. So you, you log in as a student, you'll see everything. You can do a search for it. And it, it'll filter. I only have one, but it'll filter as you're searching. Um, then you have the calendar app. This is the student's Outlook calendar. If you're familiar with Outlook, that's what this is. It's the same thing. It's uh, it's tied into the Exchange server, email server, where Outlook manages all the calendars and email and all. And this is their view of it. Now, some teachers, this is going to be different at different levels of the school. Uh, in high school, they may schedule a meeting with the students or um, in SAS, they might schedule a meeting. And what would happen is on the calendar on this day, you would see a meeting and it would there would be a button to join that meeting. So that's uh, that's how the student would be able to join in with the teacher or multiple students with the teacher into a meeting. And then the activity feed. This is uh, just a list of everything that pops up for the students. So they're um, uh, any any discussion that's going on in a channel where the student is mentioned. Uh, it'll show up here. Assignments that are created in their class will show up in the feed. Mine looks a lot more cluttered. I'm a, I'm a member of a lot of teams, uh, most of the teams in the school, so I get everything that, that they're doing. Up here on the top left, we call this the waffle, and it's just a shortcut to jump to other uh, applications inside of Office. And then uh, coming across the top, the students initials are up here on the top right. So if you ever wonder who you're logged in as, it's right there and then you can click on that. If they have a, a, a picture of themselves uploaded, it'll show their picture. Otherwise, it just simplifies with first initial, last initial. You click on it and I'm going to show you how to change some notification settings for Teams. So you go to settings. Come over here to notifications. And then you've got all your um, sections for setting the settings. I'm not going to go into great detail on this. It's just something you can work with. Um, I'll cover briefly. Uh, banner is a little pop up that'll pop up on the bottom right to let you know that, for example, when an assignment is assigned, the students will see the banner pop up. Um, the uh, and you can change that to adjust the banner or show only in the feed. Most people don't have Teams notifications sent to their email. That's going to uh, be a preference of the student. Ch so the mention section inside of a channel, if you just think of a, think of the channels kind of like a Facebook feed where you can create a post and then multiple people can reply to that post. Uh, the teachers can reply, the students can reply, students can ask questions through that. The teacher can give answers. Um, they can add documents to that thread. They can add, add pictures, etc. It's not a social media tool. Um, it's made for focused class time, so that so that the students can get direction on work. And so, if the student asks a question, the teacher might respond and just mention the student by name. And when when the teacher does that, it'll it'll give them a a ping in their activities feed or banner or email, however you have it set up. Uh, messages, we have the messaging turned off for the students. Um, there's a chat and video feature in Teams that the teachers have access to, but the students don't. Uh, we just turn that off to uh, limit some some problems. If there's a real need for students that, to use that, we will uh, come up with a way where we can deploy that in a more managed way. Um, Meetings, this is just uh, when you join meetings, some settings you can you can choose for the student. So I'm going to close that. Here, so here right here, some ellipses. Just keep an eye on those. Uh, there's 
we're going to see quite a few of those. They, there's always more underneath those. So let's go ahead and go back to our teams. And I'm going to show you how to get in. So here's here's all of our teams. And in this case, just one. We'll click on Caleb's class. Now we're inside of the Caleb's class team. Um, and this is the thread I was talking about. It's it's like the Facebook thread. So when uh, assignments are made, there will automatically be a post put in this thread. The teachers can turn this off so that the students can't uh, uh, can't make posts without, you know, just randomly. Um, the students, th however, can make posts, but they are uh, they can't delete their posts and they can't edit their posts. They can only add more posts. And the reason we do that is so that if it to prevent any type of a bullying situation or somebody may say that somebody said something and we have to go back and look and see it's just easier for us to actually go to the feed and see it and then the teacher can delete it if she needs to so let's take a look across the top these are some tabs in the active portion of the page and the post tab is is where is where we're talking about the the threads the files tab this is where some files are stored that are specific to the team and and the kids and the teacher all have access to everything in the files section. They can edit it, delete it, etc. There's one folder for the teacher where she can put things that the kids they can view it, but they can't edit or change it. Uh, class notebook. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Then we have assignments. This is where the teachers will uh, when the teachers create an assignment, it will show up in under this tab. Now we talked about assignments over here on the left that shows assignments for all classes when you're inside of a class assignments will only show for that specific class and that's what you're looking at here um, we can see that there were four assigned we can look and see what assignments have been completed um, we can see some scores for it and then the student can go into the assignment now i'm inside of an assignment i'm looking at the teacher would have instructions in here maybe set the number of points and then there's the assignment. In this case, it's it's to take a math test. So, and then they would just click on that or or whatever other resources the teacher had given them, and reach out to the teachers and ask questions when you have questions. They'll they're happy to help. Now we have the grade section over here. This is new to Teams uh, in the last few months. We are not using this, so don't look here for any for any real grade information. If you want grades, you still need to go to FACTS for that. Uh, we are working on an integration with FACTS to be able to transfer assignments and grading back and forth between the two systems. Uh, as of now, that's not functioning. Uh, we've only begun that process. Uh, and then over here, these you won't see in most, most of the classes. These are just tabs that are added, and the teachers can do that. They can add many tabs up along the top. Sometimes you'll see a drop down arrow where if you click on it, it'll list out a whole bunch of other tabs. Um, they might do that to bring to make it easy to access a document or a web page or something else. If you look over here on the left now, what we've been talking about has been all in the general channel. Underneath the class name are the channels. So we have general channel. We have a channel called week and we have a hidden channel. When we talk about a hidden channel, all it's doing is trying to keep the interface cleaner. It's not that a channel is, is intentionally hidden from the student. Um, so in order for the student to access, access the channel, they just click on the greater than sign, and there's the channel, week two. And if you want it to always show up, you just click on show. Give it a sec, there it is. Now week two will always uh, be seen. And if you want to hide a channel, same thing, just click on the ellipses and click hide. And you might do that once in a while uh, so that you're bringing attention to only the channel that you want to see. Now, this is a setting that the student and you, the parent, control. The teacher doesn't control this. When the teacher posts a new channel, they can make it uh, visible like the week two is visible now. Um, but the student can always hide it. So that's a, that's a student side setting. All right, I think I covered what I wanted to in this. I'm just taking a quick look around. Um, I think that will I think that will cover it. So if you have any questions, please please let us know. 
um, get in touch with your teachers and they will be able to point you to the IT department if you need help there. And uh, we're happy to help and help, happy to help in any way we can. Thank you so much.